Hello, everyone. So I want to remind everybody that we have only this week and next to do all of our implementation for everything that we have promised. Please, if you feel that uh, things are running late, let me know. I want to spend a lot of time this week and next working on the command line stuff for Central S2D and uh, improving the PR that is being done for environments on uninstall and, and upgrade. And I'm somewhat blocked on those items expecting stuff to be done. So we have a short agenda today. I wanted to briefly talk about environment variables that are needed, I think, and motivated by uh, a user request and also what I experienced working on the central SDOD changes. We'll hear from Clayton about uh, analysis guarantees that's versioning for the analyzer. And then I'm going to show you and give a demo of CLI flags for Istio talking via central SDOD rather than through the debug API. The environmental variables were pointed out by uh, a user who was installing SDO in a non-default namespace. He really was disappointed always having to set the namespace. With kubectl, of course, there's a way to put that into the context. We don't have it. I didn't want to really give us a file. Does anyone object to the idea of having environment variables such as these that would become the defaults and users could just export to get the behavior they want? What was the reason for not wanting to add a file? I am happy to add a file. I thought it would be easy, just a few lines to do this. If we added a file, I thought there'd be much discussion about where should the file go, what format should the file be in. Do you think there should be an Istio? We've talked before about Istio Cuddle config. Is it time for that, or should we do this as a delaying tactic? I mean, the reason I ask is because typically I have about three different tabs open, and each of those I would need to set the environment variable in. Which is very annoying. <laughs> that is a good point. Um, I I also have uh, some concern about uh, just just the precedence of of the different namespaces um, coming from different places. Uh, I think potentially this could be convenient. Um, I I think we have to be a bit careful about just not having unexpected behavior for users if, if there's multiple Istio namespaces defined? Um, it makes sense. Uh, we can do this as a feature for 1.8. Do we think we would prefer a file uh, or uh, environment variables? I can write something up for 1.8. I definitely prefer a file. Okay. I mean, the format should, like, Cobra has a bunch of stuff already to load in config files, I think. So we should just reuse that library. That is a good point. Maybe we should use the Cobra stuff more heavily than I had thought. So let me just write this down. And just some background on that Coop NS thing. I think all that basically does is set the active or set the namespace in the Coop context under the covers. Okay. So it, it's just changing Coop config, that Coop NS thing. Excellent. So, Clayton, uh, would you like to talk about CT Pence? I mean, sorry, would you like to talk about uh, analysis guarantees? And would you like me to share, continue sharing, or do you want to share? Uh, you can continue sharing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through the entire document, but um, yeah, the intent here is basically uh, when we started doing analyzer stuff, or at least when I was was started getting involved, there was kind of a 
the spoken agreement that we're going to support like one version back. And then we wrote down some other stuff, some other places. Uh, and I think there's one place in the website where we just generally say that it's backwards compatible. Um, so I wanted to kind of just shore up the, uh, the language a bit and make some harder guarantees on like what we're actually supporting or not. Uh, the requirements that I put here uh, mostly are just around documentation and agreeing on stuff. So um, the two pieces that I think are relevant are we need to say, if we're running on the CLI, um, that a Istio Cuddle will work with a certain version of Istio. And then also uh, the CRs, so everything in the API repo, uh, I would like to say we support these versions of, of CRs. Um, one, so that if you're running like against the cluster, uh, you know that uh, like if you're doing an upgrade or something, you'll be able to talk to it. Uh, and the other one, because there's just a lot of, of cases where the CLI would want to consume um, CRs or configuration that might be older than the, the version of Istio that it was compiled with. Um, and hopefully this will unlock, um, I mean, future work because there's uh, obviously like a lot of tests and, and things that we could build on top of this, but also um, some more guarantees that we can make about uh, CICD pipelines and how to use analysis, et cetera. Um, the specific proposals is that uh, the command line should work with at least one minor version back, uh, which I think is pretty non-controversial. Like you want to support the upgrade case. You don't want to support every version back because that's just ridiculous, but um, supporting just the current version misses out on a lot. Um, Should I scroll down to that? What? Yes, please. That would be the design ideas uh, heading. Uh, and I'm, I'm skipping a lot because I assume people will just read it by themselves if they're interested. Um, but uh, yeah, the other part is, uh, and this is kind of like my hot take, is that if you're doing analysis on the CLI, I want to propose that we never ever drop any support for any CRs. Um, that uh, if you see a CR that, or if you see, if it sees a CR that it doesn't recognize, it will skip it. Um, but any any uh, CR that we've published that's beta or more, will will they'll remember it and at least uh, be able to do what it did at the time. Um, that will, kind of add cruft to analyzers and hopefully we can figure out a way to do it that um we can kind of hide it below a certain line and say okay like this is just for future compatibility and everything new needs to go above here um or somebody might have a really good idea of why that that won't work um but there are a lot of um use cases i can imagine for cicd and for like i want to see how this changed over the last year in my organization that it would be useful to have that kind of guarantee for for um, removed CRs, I was thinking we don't really need the logic to analyze them, but we need simply a list of them and use the dynamic client. And if any removed CRs are found, we would just complain, um, which means manually when someone goes and deletes this code from uh, Istio API and from the analyzer that we add a line for that removed API and then we use the dynamic client to try to fetch it. Uh, that would be for the in-cluster case? That would be for the command line case. For the command line case? Um, that sounds reasonable. I was just thinking that it would be easier not to delete stuff out of the API repo unless you had a major version bump. Well, so we delete stuff out of the API repo as soon as the things are, um, no longer being used by the core Istio. And it, that frustrated me because as part of doing that work, people just remove the analyzer for it. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a belief that we don't want to compile in all this these protobufs from older versions. And so we need some other way to handle it or we need to convince the TOC to stop removing those protobufs. Okay, yeah, there's, uh, maybe there's some way that we can not, not compile everything in, but still have them available somehow. Have there been examples of that with non-beta APIs? Or, uh, oh. sorry, with, with beta APIs, rather. It's been alpha ones that have been the issue, right? Yeah, I believe the, uh, the mixer um, APIs also are the next ones to be removed. 
Yeah, well, that, that's a bigger, uh, you know, analyzers is probably not the, people are going to hit problems before they run an analyzer if they're <laughs> using the mixture and they they we remove it. Um, I mean, for simplicity's sake, if we tie it to the alpha beta GA um, quality stages, that seems simplest. So if it's alpha, there's very little guarantees, best effort. If it's beta or has been beta at some point, um, then we keep it around longer. So if you we like, how do, what's the process for removing a beta API? There's probably many many releases um, that we keep it around. And I don't know what that what that actually is. Um, so for me, the problem has been the removal of the alpha APIs and me not realizing it. Something like authorization. I get confused as to what the old and what the new one was versioned as. So I'll see some authorizations there and I'll be on some old cluster and I'll forget to make sure that they're the correct ones. Uh, yeah, so I, th I think your point about removing the protobuf for alpha APIs that no longer exist um, is, I don't know, that, that seems reasonable to me. What do you think, Clayton? I mean, it's, it, it's, I mean of course, I'm, I'm a pack rat. I would rather keep like everything around forever. But yeah, I mean, if we don't want to make guarantees around alpha APIs, then I'm, I totally understand. Um, I mean, we'd still be aware of them. So that's maybe a different, that's a change from what we have today. So we would always remember that something existed. We don't know and what would replace it potentially, um, yeah. which maybe is not, great if somebody's on a really old version that was depending on an alpha API, but at least they know, okay, the, the remedy is not to do some config change, it's just use a different config. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's an artifact too of Istio's history where everything was an alpha API. So yeah. we were, people were using alpha APIs in production, which seems like the wrong practice to encourage anyway. So if we can get to the use beta, there's stronger guarantees, alpha, there's, there's less guarantees. It's maybe in the end better for everybody. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And if there's, uh, I don't, I, I don't want to tie this proposal to like uh, discussing alpha beta GA semantics on the API because I feel like that's way more contagious. Um, I'm, I'm okay taking a, we'll keep beta around for like, I don't know, a couple years and GA around till version bumps and be okay with that. And we can, we can fight more later if we need to. No, no I think that's that's pretty much it. And just there's no, there's the only guarantee for alpha is that, well. Maybe this is a question. Did you say that for alpha, the minimum requirement is that we just know that something existed and be able to point somebody to the replacement? Yeah, or at least like not um, have some way of of saying, of differentiating the, I, I have no idea what this ER is. Did you make a typo versus this isn't something that I, I can process anymore because you need to update. Okay. Uh, as, like that's the big case, I think. That seems reasonable to me. Um, what would be the implications outside of analyzers? So who who else would um, who else might object to this? Um, in terms of like, I guess if we were keeping APIs around, th there would be, you know, we, we might need to bring that to the TOC because there's implications on you know, the, the project health because more code is is being maintained yeah um, but i don't think you're proposing that um yeah i mean i i didn't actually find a strict here's the guidelines for apis and what alpha and beta means for apis versus features so i'm not sure yeah i'm not really sure we should like there will probably be at least a, a hopefully short conversation with the toc saying this is the understanding we're moving forward with if that's completely wrong please let us know yeah but, that's it well, Lynn, what, Lynn's on the call. So what do, you, what do you think, Lynn? Does that sound like a good path forward? I'm sorry. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> so is there any user-facing impact for this? Yeah. So um, let me see if I can summarize. Or Clayton, if you want to, you can. Uh, uh, I'll take a stab. Uh, in, um, let's see. Uh, the proposal would be to make sure to have a minimum length of time that we keep around beta and um, 
or not alpha API CRs in the API repo to make sure that when we're doing uh, analysis, at least analysis, that there's a certain um, a certain amount of time backward we will be able to like deserialize and analyze a specific protobuf. And uh, would this help user as they transition the alpha API to beta API? Well, we would be kind of more, more give them meaningful warnings and uh, help them with the transition. I'm trying to understand what would be the impact for the user. Um, yeah, I think I think it would unlock something to do that that we could definitely have an analyzer that would kind of point one thing to another. So we don't have an analyzer that does a built-in upgrade or anything like that. And I'm, I'm not convinced that we need to keep analyzing deprecated APIs. There's little value in saying, well, this doesn't work, but even it wouldn't have worked even two years ago. <laughs> I think the big thing though is being able to report I've, you've got some old crs on your cluster don't expect them to work um, it's a it's helpful to to know that i have sometimes deleted sto and had some old stuff lying around and thought it was supposed to work so we definitely want to extend the deprecation analyzer to have a removal analyzer that just says these remove types exist uh, for sure. Um, going back one version is something that we do sort of already. We don't remove the code one version back. I think that's what Clayton's proposal is, is just to keep analyzing things that are old. And I think we, he, we need to do one extra thing that he's saying here, which is if a field was deprecated, let's say a field was deprecated or, or unimplemented in 1.7, it gets implemented in 1.8. Now you're on a 1.8 client. There needs to be some kind of way to say, um, well, my Istio cuddle is 1.8, but my control plane is 1.7. Please analyze this as if you were 1.7 or something like that. So, um, is it, the user wants to know if the control plane is going to interpret his, his things and if the control, and because Istio Cuddle works with a back level control plane. The analysis should not promise that the current control plane version analysis is the same as what will be supported by the control plane. Right, because you could have, well, I guess you could have 1.2, maybe 1.6 or 1.7 control plane, and then with with support can canary control plane, you could potentially point to 1.7 or 1.8 really soon, you would get different results. Right. Based on that fact, I, I think for me, um, the analyzer, um, I think we've done really good job with warning. Some of our warning messages um, maybe wasn't straightforward. For instance, I got a panic um, attack myself recently with Envoy filter. Um, so somebody sent me a message that Envoy filter, uh, that filter field was deprecated, and I didn't interpret that particular field build really well. I had thought like the Envoy filter was deprecated. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think what's also interesting is we don't tell people, you know, when this is deprecated, what am I supposed to do? So that takes time to research. Well, in my case, I had to ask on our channel and it takes multiple back and forth with many human actually, you know, help me and re respond and, and think out what to do. So I think, and not only reporting like the, the deprecated field, but also kind of a hint to people, you know, this is what they need to do. That will be tremendous helpful too. And that goes back to what Ed was saying, like if these resources are totally, you know, old and not going to be used for, you know, we either have the user delete them or they could be gracefully transitioned to the new API to do things. That was reasonable. Yeah, we could uh, keep the, everything that got deleted, we could keep like a map of here's, here's the version of this CR and point it to 
I, I don't know, a short string. It could be a website. It could be a what to do. Uh, it could be a run this command and it'll upgrade for you. So um, everything you say is right, Lynn, and we should put more work into our messages, especially advice about what to do in the case of things and distinguishing between fields that are unimplemented because they're coming in the future and fields that are unimplemented because they've been removed. I would ask you as a TOC member, when you are reviewing any PRs to remove APIs or even see that one is being out there to flag it, demanding that the person have a related PR for the analyzer to indicate that a field is about to be deprecated. That's a great idea. So should we kind of label these in a particular way? So you, um, so it would be easily discovery where you could potentially run a query maybe every other week or every month, you would be able to tell these are the field that would impact the analyzer. Right, so we, we don't, what we, we, we have generators that the analyzer uses for things like what are the valid annotations? So the analyzer doesn't, when people add a new annotation, no code has to be changed in the analyzer, but we don't have any code to sort of say, what are the deprecated fields? It might be valid, like when removing an analyzer to have a generator sort of, um, or something, something to make a list of what has been removed. Maybe instead of deleting proto file, you rename it to be deprecated proto or something that is only used by the generator to come up with a list of the um, kinds and versions that are being deprecated. Because it's all manual now and it's easy to miss. Yeah, I think uh, there, there are two things. Uh, one is uh, we need um, to say we, we first need to mark a field as deprecated uh, and then after a few versions and this can be removed because after the field is removed there's actually currently there's no way for us to uh, to know about the field exactly uh, right so yeah right so, so so the good news is once it's been marked as deprecated there's at least one more release where it would be continue to be supported and when once it's marked as deprecated that's the time we want to have analytes kind of report to user hey you really need to update um this so that when you upgrade to the newer istio and the next istio your api your deprecated api can continue work by moving to the new api we yes we we need that and we need users to stop putting hide from docs and to deprecate particular fields without also putting some kind of notes in for why it was hidden. Several times I've asked, I've said, Neeraj, this field has been hidden, so I marked it as deprecated. He said, no, it was hidden because we didn't get the implementation done. <laughs> implementation does get done, and then I forget to unmark it as deprecated. So oh. it's... It sounds like just a few things being discussed in parallel here. Um, and I, I want to make sure we don't increase the scope of, of Clayton's uh, proposal. There's so the, the two pieces. One, um, we probably need a better process for how we manage API lifecycle um, in terms of what's hidden from docs and um, what's marked deprecated and when. Uh, a second one would be what's the policy for. Um, specifically for analyzers, which we, we kind of have an implicit policy, I think. Okay. The, the, the part of Clayton's proposal is we want to codify that in some way. Um, and I think that's the part where we're having some TOC feedback, um, not on the implementation, but just the uh, what, what we would implement. So yeah, supporting beta APIs for n number of minor versions, um, similar thing for GA, none for alpha. Um, and actually just not making sure that's visible and that everybody knows about it. Um, and then the third part is um, specifically for analyzers, how they're implemented, um, where the code lives. Uh, and I don't know what, we, maybe they can be, well, the latter, how we manage 
and implement the analyzers, I think depends on what policy we want to implement. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd want to get that sorted out first. The process for APIs in general, um, that's a separate, separate thing that we should probably take a look at. Are these three bullets, oh, do they uh, mean the same thing as what you said or did I screw it up? Uh, yeah, I mean, the first one, I don't know if it would be, if there's other examples or if it's specifically just about adding and removing fields. Um, would you extend the second item to also include fields? So are you aware of fields that, I mean, we shouldn't be removing fields in a, in a beta API, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I would rather just say let's, like, we shouldn't need to worry about one if we bump versions properly, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think Clayton said non-alpha APIs. Or you can say beta and GA, because we technically have dev APIs when they're in development. Yeah, uh, I think part of the reason people are relying so much on Analyzer is because we don't document this well. <laughs> There's no single page. <laughs> I, I also had people um, reporting kubectuddle explain and ask them about fields that appear in kubectuddle explain, but do have no documentation due to them being hidden. Uh, and I think there's a PR saying in the future, or that maybe there's just an issue in the future when you um, generate the CRD description documentation, it should say this field is hidden rather than just leaving it blank. Like, a, you know, this, this field purposely left blank rather than just leaving it blank. All right, well, uh, thank you, Clayton, for this, um, for, for holding our feet to the fire about being <laughs> strict about this. So, no problem. Uh, I have actually a couple of ideas about uh, how to tie them together. So I guess I'll make another proposal proposal and be back next time. Thank you, Clayton. Um, yeah, I had a follow up about what we're gonna, what the action from this is, but it sounds like Clayton, you're gonna follow up yeah. on all three. Uh, yeah, I think we can't get away from the API discussion, and I think we might be able to do something like have some tooling in the API repo to like lend and generate the list of stuff, and then users consume that in the analyzer, and that will both be a description and an enforcer of what, what the guidelines are. Uh, okay. I need to work through whether that's actually implementable or not. Um, do you, if that's a significant amount, a non-trivial amount of work, it might be useful just to have a quick, like a one-page RFC. And maybe this is it's a modification of what you have um, and just run it by the TOC and say, here's here's the policy that we want to have. And does that look reasonable? And if, they, if it's yes, then you know it's worth spending more time on figuring out how we'd actually do it. Sure thing. OK, moving on, the next item um, the CLI options for XDS. So with central SDOD and remote control plane, Istio Cuddle will be talking directly to XDS rather than using the debug API for commands such as version and proxy status. So this is the picture. Istio Cuddle either talks, uh, to the ingress uh, for like a web hosted central Istio D, or if Istio is running on your own control plane, it can do a port forward the way it always has, but it will be port forwarding to XDS rather than to the debug API. There's four going to be able to talk. Uh, if you're just debugging, you can just start a connection uh, directly to Istio D. But of course, this will not be available. Um, our, our, it's unclear if this is going to be available. This is an in cluster thing, and it's unsecured. And there's work items to get rid of that that security are pursuing. Um, also within the cluster, we can talk to the secure channel, uh, gRPC with certificates. And that's going to be the way that it's going to will be the default for users who have self host Istio. They're running it themselves. If you are running central Istio D, um, if you're like an imp implementer, you can 
have a debug connection directly to SDOD, but typically you will have a secure connection to it. It will come in through the Ingress gateway and talk to it. Maybe it's not even a Kubernetes involved. Those are the four ways. And I have documented here uh, just the current rat's nest of how I'm getting certificates. There are work, there's a work item to get them in a better way. The security group has been pursuing that. So I'm not going to talk about the hassles I had of getting them here, which was way too tricky due to several bugs and confusion. But once you have certificates, I wanted to show the new command line options for how this is going to work. So if you are um, running SEO yourself, you want to use this debug endpoint. You just tell it to use XDS port uh, 1510, and it should just work. No certificates involved. Um, if you are running Istio on your own control plane and you want to do it the secure way, because the 1510 has been disabled, you have to give it the um, certificates that you downloaded before. And I think there's been some talk of you know whether Istio Cuddle will automatically download them if they don't exist. But for the stuff that I got merged yesterday, you have to tell it where your certificates are. Does all this make sense so far? It's going to be port forwarding uh, in to make this happen. The same as before. It's going to talk to every uh, instance of STOD exactly the same as before. It's just going through XDS. Yeah, so question. Um, when I specify the XDS port number, is that Port number configurable if I'm not exposing that um, 15010 on my STOD? So currently, STOD by default listens on two endpoints uh, 1512 with security, 1510 without security. So the fact that it offers both of them made me want to offer both of them. The my expectation is that people won't be using 1510 because Kostin keeps telling me it's going to be shut down. And if we go to the issue here, so this is this is my issue for something that's going to happen to make Istio Color get these certificates because using the make file is ridiculous. But the security group has been tracking this through this item, which is a P1, that they're should be certificate authentication uh, between the pilot agent and pilot. So if they can do this P1, then they'll be able to shut down 1510. They also have this other one that got closed prematurely, um, how Istio issues the certificate to their remote cluster. Or maybe this has been consumed by something else. I was hoping someone from security would join, tell me about the status of those. But I'm checking it through this. So we, we need to get that certificate, but since it's only a P1 for security, we might not have it. I see. If we don't have it, it would be full back to the debug port, which is 15010. Yes. No, it's so, definitely number configurable, though. Like uh, if it's on multiple ECO D, maybe I put some um 15010, the other ECO D on 15011. Right. So my understanding from, from my memory of the code, which is vague, is that 1510 is whether it's configurable on pilot is DOD, I don't know. But the client uses this number as a hint not to use security. So there may be some additional trickery that needs to be done. Uh, it's possible that we can do it, but in the central SDOD case, this 1510 will not be involved. So you've, what you've been seeing is self-hosted SDOD. For central SDOD, um, you will be supplying two parameters, the XDS address and the certificate directory. Um, or if you're not using security, which we'd only use if you're testing yourself on your laptop, 
on localhost, you would specify that and maybe this um, SAN name, which makes sure that the security, at least there's no man in the middle. Uh, in addition to those options, there I added an insecure option, similar to curl, a timeout, and a label selector because Costin asked for the label selector but those should almost never be used unless you have a very strange situation. So let me try to show a demo now so that you can see what's happening. So I'm running pilot discovery here with extra logging in one window. And then over here, I'm running the other and I have all my commands in a text file. So I've got, um, is to cuddle X version. It's exactly the same as S2 cuddle version, but it's an experimental. This is under the covers, a different technique to get the version number. So I press enter, it comes back much quicker than usual. And it tells me the client control plan and data plane version. And some stuff happened on the server, these log lines. So that is sort of testing locally. Um, if you're using security, you can either use this insecure option uh, or you can tell it the expected endpoint. You wouldn't need the insecure option or the expected endpoint if you were talking to a real cloud provider. So if you were talking to a real cloud provider, you'd still give it the certificates, but you'd give it some kind of name like uh, istio.mycloud.com and it could be a random port, um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, something like that. Of course, there is no such port here. That's not going to happen. It's going to wait until the timeout and give up. But that's that's the basic way it works in the central case. If it's self-hosted, to go without security, um, this XDS port, this XDS port talked to what I'm running in my actual cluster. So you see different versions than what you saw when I was running locally uh, pilot. And this just says to use the insecure port. It, it, um, if I, it did a single port forward, but if I'd had three instances of S2D, it would have port forwarded to all of them and combined them. And the secure option is there too. If we can come up with a good way to get the certificates on to or down on the client. One quick comment uh, on the um, Sun stuff. Uh, it would be great if you can have some quota detective local XDS address is localhost 15012. Uh, you automatically add the assist your DSG assistant SVC. We already have some code that is doing that somewhere. So um, I, I do that for the case where. Um, we're talking to Kubernetes and going yep. through port forward. I, I, with port forward, I do the SAN already. When we're talking locally to this test case, I do not automatically do it. I could. That's fine. Uh, just a simple, the most common case probably will be you use XDS port. Uh, I mean, use kube for uh, proxy forward, sorry, port forward. So, so certainly this works great and it tells you um your version same as before if you had a lot of proxies i only have one but if you had a lot they would all be appearing here and the same logic will work for istio cuddle proxy status so that should be easy to implement this is great we still um, get sync information we're waiting for some stuff with mitch for sync but we should have it soon so that Sorry, Ed, what sync information can you Refresh oh, my memory. Just, just, just we somehow we have to find out if these clients are synchronized. And I know you wanted to use um, some of the new proto buffs. Oh, yeah, synchronization the CFDS service. Yeah. So, um, so, do you think you would use that for the version command, or that would just no. be for proxy status? For proxy status. Yeah. Okay. And, but you know, because all the pieces are here for version, proxy status should be real easy. It's going to be the same call if we can just get it to cough up whether or not each of these data plane client 
I mean, it says one proxy. If we can just cough up if they're synced or stale, then we'll have it. Yeah. So there are some active debates about that particular protobuf in Envoy. So it has two dual use. One is to do a dump of the config, and that's not entirely clear. And the other one is this page the proxy status. My suggestion was to break it into two different pieces, one matching the, the config dump and one matching the, the status, and just write a simple generator with a simple protobuf so you can get un get unblocked, basically. That sounds like a great way to get unblocked for 1.7. Uh, Mitch, can you handle implementing it? Uh, I'm not really comfortable with that design. Uh, oh, okay. I don't think that doing a unblocked API is probably a good idea for Istio. Uh, these APIs are things that we expect our users to integrate with. So we need to make sure before we move forward that it's an API that we're ready to support. Well, the whole uh, the whole XDS stuff over XDS is experimental and uh, alpha at this moment. Um, Clearly, the Envoy API, I, again, I think it's unacceptable in the current form, so uh, I doubt it will fly. Um, I don't think this really needs to be a stable API before it's time. So it's basically we can iterate on the API a few times and uh, see how it works. So, Kostin, what you and I agreed to last week is that I would set up some performance tests for showing the impact of running CSDS against an existing pilot server. Uh, and that we would go from there once we understand the performance impact. So I'm in the process of that. I should have data tomorrow, probably. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, if I don't know if the performance data will be sufficient to to have this uh, to have the Envoy API adopted by Istio. And anyway, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, this API is not exposed to a user, right? It's a user using it through the Istio cuddle commands, like proxy status. They're not using this API directly, is that correct? Yep. No, part of the objective of moving forward with the troubleshooting API in 1.7 was to come up with something that users could interact with. Now, it's possible that we say in 1.7 we're not there, but still we have the long-term goal of these APIs becoming user accessible. Long term, I certainly agree. And Mitch, I really appreciate you holding us um, to being disciplined about doing this because we should not always replace one debug API with another one rather than going to where we want. I do want to mention that Feature Freeze is next Friday, and I would be very sad if there was no way to tell if the proxies were stale. And, and and also again, uh, Envoy apparently rushed with uh, with an API that has scalability problem. And now and now Mitch has to do performance tests to verify that it's at least viable. And even if it's viable, it's still a bad API because it it's you know kind of unnecessarily uh, expensive. Uh, I think it's a very good idea to iterate and again have a prototype, see how it works, and improve. Not necessarily try to to in two weeks to get something that uh, just to have it. As an API. So I think a prototype's fine. If we don't have this, these options for 1.7, it is something not usable in Istio that's not alpha. The concern is that the proxy status command won't work under central Istio D. Uh, okay. Well, we, we do have the, the old debug endpoint, which is far worse than any alpha we can come in terms of API because it's completely unprotected and completely, you know. Uh, it was never intended as an API, and we're still we are using it. So I think whatever we are doing is still a, a step forward. Even if we quantify, if we take whatever is the output of uh, debug uh, slash whatever and, and and dump it as a JSON in the output. Right. So what what's done is done. So the the insecure endpoints there, and we can do things to protect it. Um, I guess my concern is, you can say something is a prototype, but if it's the only way to use a feature that's that's in beta. Um, people start depending on it, and then we get. It, then it's difficult to support because we want to deprecate things, and we have to do extra work. We're basically, giving a false promise to, to users. Um, and, so sorry, if we can avoid that. I, I think that would be preferable. So, uh, sorry, Jason. Uh, just gave me an idea. What? Uh, how, how about uh, use the slash debug? Format so whatever you, you right now we are using slash debug slash something status your I don't remember the exact endpoint, which outputs a JSON. How about we use 
over XDS exactly the same output. So it's easy to parse. There is minimal change in your code because you already have code that is parsing the output of slash debug slash whatever. So the only difference will be instead of getting it from uh, slash debug slash whatever port, you will get it over XDS as a resource type. Because in reality, an XDS type URL is equivalent to the URL, except that it's over XDS. It doesn't even have to be proto. I mean, you can just put a JSON there. So the format of the debug endpoint is actually very similar to the format of CSDS, uh, which is one of the reasons that we selected that in the design document. Uh, so if we don't have a severe performance impact from generating a CSDS, uh, I strongly prefer that direction. Uh, Mitch, there is not similar. There are two endpoints, one that gets config dump and one that gets status. I'm familiar with that. So the, the status portion is very similar from proxy status on debug to CSDS. Sure, but what I'm saying is not combining them. What we have today is that two completely different endpoints. I'm saying let's keep two completely separate endpoints. The API is combining two completely unrelated endpoints, and that's a real problem I have with it. But we don't. Okay. Last week, it cost the last week, the problem was performance. Is 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 that no longer a concern? No, no, it is definitely a concern for the first part. Can we get an enumerated list of your concerns so that we know when we have satisfied all of them? Uh, remember that I'm not the only one that is involved in API and in review. I mean, I'm pretty sure you'll find more people that have concerns about uh, API and review APIs. Uh, what I'm suggesting is using the existing formats that are well established and used, would unblock 1.7 and allow Ed to do the minimal change because he will, he will just use the existing code. I don't think we have time to write a design doc that reflects that and then go through implementation in eight working days. Which is perfectly fine because we didn't have a design doc for the first format so and or API review. So it's an ad hoc debug endpoint. Um, we already have the code. We are just changing how we are transporting it over XDS instead of over plain text. Mitch, in the CSDS, um, the actual detailed configuration is that mandatory or can be optional? Can we just not? ship it in 1.7, but only ship enough information to tell if you're stale or not? I think that would be viable for now. Uh, I'd like to get to where we can include that. I know, Ed, you proposed a compromise where if there's no uh, node filter or node matcher supplied, then we don't supply any config dumps. And then config dumps are supplied only when node matchers are explicitly set. I think that's a viable compromise, and I can work with the Envoy team to better understand uh, their intention around that for the one eight or one nine time frame. But again, it will still that's have right. a combined API, and I don't think that's. I mean, we already have an API that is used. We, but we, for central STD, we get one thing to expose. We don't have a lot of paths and things. We we have the same we, path set. Okay. So if you if you just use the same path in in, in a, as a type URL. You get the same response. You just need to write a generator instead of a handler. So you need to convert the, the handler that is already in, in Istio to, to work with a generator uh, input. Kostin, if you wrote one for me, then I could try it out as an experiment. I can do that. It's uh, But you can try it as well. It's, it's you, There is a handler that is generating the output. You need to write another method that is implementing the generator interface that generates exactly the same output. It's, it's, it's uh, quite easy. All right. I, How about I, 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 I write, a, I, write a, I can write you a few lines of code and you can you can take it over. All right, I will try that. I want to experiment with it and learn it whether or not my stuff gets used or not. Okay. Sure. Uh, in the remaining couple of minutes, I wanted to discuss a few enhancement ideas. Um, this one I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the call, not everyone was here. This idea of defaulting these values so the user doesn't have to type it every time so that the user uh, in different environments has the short heard from people with alignment variables for this, they wanted a config file. So I'm gonna take a look at the stuff that is built into uh, Cobra um, this afternoon and see if it's possible to do that in the next few days. Otherwise, we'll push that off to 1.8. The other thing that I wanted to ask everyone's opinion on, um, so the certificates that I've been doing this with, my tests all expire in two days. And I got really frustrated with something that I thought was supposed to work and it didn't work because my certificates had expired. Is it reasonable for the client to, I mean, Istio Cuddle being the client, is it reasonable for Istio Cuddle to 
warn the user, maybe not even work if the certificates have expired because pilot's not going to say anything other than hang up. Uh, ideally, you'd put this code in package in the common place because agent itself should do the same thing. So it's not only Istio Cutter, everyone should check certificates before they're used. It's actually going to go into agent because agent is the thing then that's perfect. parsing that. So that, okay. So Kostin loves it. So I will try to do that. Um, and I don't think it even needs a way to force it or anything. If somebody is supplying an expired certificate, um, it's fine just to throw an exception out of ADSC dial. Uh, uh, it's a bit more complicated. The, the logic should be if the certificate doesn't exist or it's expired, try to look for a token. And if you use a token, get a new certificate because uh, the logic will also be used for, uh, for um, VMs and uh, Kubernetes. Maybe I'll just start it then, but I really, for me, it's super important to have this yeah. because when I've done the certificate stuff, um, it's been hard. I mean, I, I added I added how you check it if you don't have this. How about you, start it and find stop. bugs for, for people working on VM provisioning and Kubernetes and security? Because this is, you know, a bug that happens even in real production sites and uh, for VMs in particular. Okay. So that that is um, basically what I have. Um, it so could we back up a moment? I just want to make sure the discussion about the CLI was captured someplace. Um, it's not clear to me what action actions people need to take. Okay, let's capture them now. So the first is that um, we have uh, no good way for users to make certs. We don't know if the COD will need certs in the case of self-hosted Istio. If Istio, if central Istio D, if your cloud provider is doing it, they're going to require certs, but they'll give it to you uh, in some way that may not be related to what's happening here, possibly. So I'm going to ignore that for now. So what's the action? What are, what are people going to go do? Um, I mean, there's yeah, yeah. Some people say they're going to do things, but I don't know how it all fits together, particularly in the next eight ten days. Yeah, I think Carsten, you mentioned that you would create something to for add to further explore to enable him to do the proxy status command. Yeah, I, I can I can send him a few lines of code. It's it's, it's really easy to to add generators. It's yeah. I, 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 I'll try to to get one for you quickly as an example. With regard to the proxy status command, Kostin, I understand that you have reservations around the shape of the CSDS API. How yes. do we move forward there? Do we need to take a vote from UX maintainers on the design? Uh, I've not been moving forward on implementation until a design review is approved. Uh, so uh, this concerns networking working group as well. This concerns um, the TOC. It's a new API that, that needs to be adopted. And again, uh, I don't think we have a performance working group anymore, but you'll have some, some data on how much it costs. But in terms of API design, I think that TOC is the one ultimately approving uh, APIs. Okay. And if the TOC is, is okay, because it's not my decision anyway. I mean, it's 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 uh, uh, the TOC. If the TOC is okay with combining the, uh, both things in in uh, in one API and, and the associated costs and and the designs and whatever. I mean, it's not my. Uh... Gotcha. So, I, would it be safe to say? And I'm, I guess I'm asking uh, the UX maintainers in particular: Are we in favor of this design and ready to ask the TOC for API review of CSDS? And Costin can register his objections there. Is that a fair way to move forward? I mean, I'll, I'll get other people on networking and, and who are involved in performance. I mean, Mandar and the other people who are particularly focused on performance. So there's uh, a performance problem with this compromise, right? If they're, uh, it's, they're not it's, it's big dumps, there's no no performance problem there. Uh, the design of the API is, you know, bad from a performance. I mean, when you design an API, you need to take performance into consideration, even if you don't use it the way it is intended. Again, we can have use a better API, and or we can use the existing API and not have to 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 do the work to adopt an API that is clearly badly designed. Um, 
So can and we again, hear from UX maintainers is, is what I'm trying to get at, Cost, and I, I've heard your objections. Uh, we, we do have a design doc that has been proposed. Are there any concerns from maintainers in the UX working group on this? Uh, I have concerns not a bit specifically about the API, but just trying to understand what how everything's supposed to fit together. Um, I understand there's performance implications of having one API. Um, it, it If we can split things up so there's stepping for 1.7 and then beyond, um, and we're are we talking about agreeing for the, the beyond, like 1.8 plus, um, what things might look like. That was the question. Are we? Are you asking? Do we have any concerns long term? One. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking seven. in terms of one seven. If we take on the limitation that we're not doing config dumps through CSDS in one seven for performance reasons, um, are we comfortable asking the TOC to approve the CSDS API for one seven? I don't know. Um, it's it's a pretty short time frame. And, and just, I mean, if, if everything ends up getting rushed, I don't think that's good. Um, I mean, I would I prefer to see what's the minimal thing we can do for 1.7 that unblocks any central SDOD use case. Yeah. Well, without, be... without it, if, if we're requiring API re level review for whatever we do, um, the process will be the same, whether we're talking about uh, SDS or whether we're talking about a JSON dump of what we currently have, that's a new API. I, I think using the existing format of debug is not quite a new API. It's exactly the same API we have today over different transport. Uh, in networking, we had a similar discussion about exposing MCP over XDS. And now we it was approved and it was not treated as a new API because MCP was already there. So I think grandfathering APIs that already exist is perfectly reasonable and will have far less, uh, you know, Constance, because it's already shipped. Yeah, I mean, I guess if central SDOD is alpha in 1.7, then I have a lot less concern um, if we have a prototype command in SDO cuddle. Um, I guess my, my concerns would be, I have more concerns if we were saying this is a beta level feature, people are going to take a, uh, they're going to put in production, and we have no tooling, or we have tooling that's, that's a prototype or built on an API that hasn't been sufficiently reviewed. I think so. under both of our recommendations, this would end up under experimental in Istio Cuddle, which we're considering at alpha level support. Is that right, Ed? Yeah, that's, it wasn't what it shows up in Istio Cuddle. It's the, the thing that, so we only, my understanding is we need to use this for central SDOD. It's what qual, what feature stage is central SDOD in 1.7? Uh, just, I think it's not only for Istio I mean, the whole idea here is that at some point in a secure deployment, doesn't matter if it's central Istio or single Istio or single cluster, we need to shut down the insecure ports. Uh, understood. So right now, the status quo is it's insecure. We need to fix it. Um, for all environments, it, like, it, it sounded like for central Istio it was there was we didn't have any viable option um, without this change. So that's a bit different. Um, yes. Right. We can say yes. It's 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 not great that we're using NC support. We can try to fix it. There's some some mitigations without an API change. Sounds reasonable. Uh, but is I, I haven't heard an answer to the question about what. Maybe that's what we need to figure out. What? How will we be launching Central SDOD? Is that something that we're going to say we're going to fully support, or it's that is experimental or alpha as well? If I can give you my take is we already support central Istio and we supported it since we started multi-cluster because Istio is just a particular way to deploy multi-cluster. So right, the, the particular way that IBM wants to use it. It's not only IBM, everyone wants to use it. It's very experimental, right? So this new version command I'm putting in the experimental subcommand of Istio Cuddle. No, Ed, I'm talking about installing a central Istio. I mean, having a, having a Istio running a remote cluster and and locking down the access to the cluster. That has been around for a long time. In the one seven release, one seven zero. Lynn, did you have any particular intention regarding the the status of central Istio in one seven? Yeah, so I definitely would 
prefer at least alpha, right? Um, so I, I think it comes down to, you know, how do you, what are the scenarios you are going after for central HOD? Um, so for instance, we're going to promote him multi-cluster as beta. I think that's on the plan for environment group for 1.7. And uh, uh, some of the central SOD work was kind of related to the multi-cluster work that we already done, and we're adding automation test cases for multi-cluster and central SOD for one seven. So that would qualify probably for that piece. I, I think the deployment architecture on the server side is at least alpha and maybe beta, and, but I do understand the still cuddle. It's tricky, especially when you have SDOD on a different cluster right. uh, than the primary cluster user interact with. I, I I don't think we will be ready for beta for that piece, um, given where we are right now. It's probably more alpha experimental is uh, for some of the commands like version and uh, proxy status, just because. Um, it's not as easy used for as when users just interact with one single cluster today. Yeah, so that's so. Yeah, we, we in fact we have something like central SDOD, but my understanding with the the more recent changes going into one point seven is, um, it, it's we're, we're making a stronger claim that we support a control plane that the app cluster doesn't have access to, or that that's behind a a a, a um, a thicker wall. Um, so if we say whatever we call that, whether that's central SDOD or hardened SDOD. Shared control plane was used to be called. Yeah. Well, with shared control plane, it's the users have had access so far. Well, so I was going to say, if we, if we claim something is beta, whatever it is, this this thing is beta, there's no good, there's no non, the, the only way to debug it is to use this experimental command. Um, that. I know that doesn't seem right to me. Maybe, maybe I'm an exception. Um, but uh, but we can have debugging is alpha or experimental, but the deployment is beta because uh, centralized study we never made a guarantee that the admin must give permission to everyone to the cluster. I mean, it was always namespaces should not have access to the Istio system. But, but I'd argue that in order for Istio to be usable today, people are using proxy status and proxy config. So that's not maybe. a and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's I, I see that an awful lot. You know, if everything works perfectly, they don't need it. But as soon as they the, the system's misbehaving or they push wrong config, that's the one of so, the tools they reach for. Uh, Justin, I know organizations where teams do not have access to Istio system for as policy because it's I mean just basically they they give them just the uh, namespace credentials in Kubernetes and they don't have any permission to Istio system. So I don't think everyone has it. Yeah, I, I think for people onboarding and the in their app, it's common of course. to have access because they need to testing things. But I guess uh, if if this thing has been certified to run on Istio, and then the other role that's more focusing on, you know, make sure the app can be deployed and operates the the microservices, they don't have to debugging as much, right? Those roles I can see maybe they don't need access to Istio system. Them. So I was I was playing with Envoy filter and uh, Wasm code uh, early last month, and boy, I sure needed proxy status all the time. You make a single mistake in your Wasm, and it takes down all of your proxy. They all go stale. Right, uh, that's what I was thinking. If you are making debugging. changes to your app, if you are meshify your application or microservices. Today, you definitely need to run proxy status and uh, de debug. Uh, as long as you know, the first thing you do analyze. If analyze is not helpful, then that's the but, next thing. Literally, you have to do. But at the okay, same so time, if you're if you're running in production, a real production environment, you better not give access to Istio system to everyone. That is true because you dealing with people who already meshify the microservice, right? Because people already gone through the development stage and it's typically the operator operating these services in production and- What a different team. I, I think we're all in a uh, sort of violent agreement here that this is definitely not a design we want to have where Istio system access is required for debugging. We all want to move away from that. 
The question is what level of support we're granting that use case in one seven, and I don't think we can do better than alpha. Yeah, it sounds like that's where we are today. Is that's where we are not, today? Yes. Yeah. So, would it be reasonable to say for one dot seven, this experimental com command goes in? It's not specific to central SDOD or anything. It's just we want a more secure way to provide uh, diagnostic information. This this is subject to change. Um, we're using an existing API. Um, we can debate what that actually means, whether it's the transport of the actual content. Um, but there's no guarantees beyond what we already, or there's no guarantees. It's, it's purely experimental. Um, and then we have to put together a better plan um, for 1.8. So we're not rushing around at the last minute. My only request is to not tie it to, to central I mean, because I, I believe this is right. a, the use cases are common for single cluster as well. Yeah, that that that's what I'm um, coming to the realization. It, so it it's not specific to... The reason I'm uh, so pushing so hard is because it's under central you, you I don't want you to lose features because I didn't agree at the beginning of the cycle that there'd be features that wouldn't be present. Until I get permission to remove features from Istio Cuddle, I'm not going to let them go away. It, it sounds but, like that problem already exists today, whether we formally call it sensor SDOD or not. So it's exactly. a, there's, a, there's a hole that we have um, and maybe it's highlighted by the with this central SDOD effort. So that's good, but we need yeah, to right fix on. it properly. We need to fix it properly for 1.8. Um, and there's really not a lot of strong guarantees we can provide for 1.7. That raises an interesting question. Uh, right now in a locked down cluster, the one I was describing in production, all this information is not exposed and, and, and this obviously locked down. Uh, are we introducing some security issues with this design that we didn't consider? I, I don't think that's what we need to figure out right now. Um, there's the immediate problem of 1.7 and what, what yeah. it can do. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the, like, if we were going to prioritize okay. some of these, that would probably be the, the biggest one. So if we can get okay. feedback from you constant about what are we okay supporting for 1.7 with the minimum amount of changes without you know, having to go through a, a full API review. Maybe it's very minimal. It's, we're going to use the same API over a different transport. Get that done for 1.7. And then we need to work better together for 1.8 to, to have a, a design that's everybody agrees with, that's approved, and then we can commit to it. Um, but that's, that's going to be a 1.8 plus effort. I'd like to zero in on that 1.8 focus, Jason, because in the past, what we've seen is when we do a good enough API, uh, something as a stopgap to just go in and get things done for the release. Oftentimes, what we find is when we go to improve it, the argument is, well, why improve it? We've already got this API. It's functional. There's no reason to change it. Um, so I, I'm hesitant to delay those concerns, if that I, makes sense. I, I don't know if we can get it in 1.7, and I think well, if yeah. if we do the minimal amount for 1.7, it, it doesn't just work. It's not secure. There's issues with certs, potentially. Um, there, there's still a lot of things that's, I mean, maybe the API, the content is, th there's not as many issues with that, but everything else surrounding it still is not, it's still not fixed. What, what do you mean? Um, well, it's, you, point that you made the, the point that maybe it's not secure. No, no, it will um, be secure. I mean, what we're describing will be secure. I mean, it's just exposes some additional information that is what I mean it's the same problem we have for everything else we just fix security I mean <laughs> some, uh, we just added security to to to, to XDS and, and verification of certificates and everything else okay we, we may need um, additional review but again from from security uh, product security point of view but uh, so um maybe we should bring this to this next security meeting cost and you and I to show them what we have and what we want that's product security really Security working group is dealing with secure certificates, authentication, product securities, with hacking and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there... I agree with you. Okay. okay. Mitch, did you have any other concerns with the do something, do the minimal amount for 1.7 and have a, a plan for 1.8? Uh, no, I think that was that was my concern is that we never revisit it. Okay. Sometimes and, what okay. works is good. Yeah, and that's what I expect to hear you saying in a few weeks when I propose this for 1.8. Uh, that's that's exactly the problem, is that we have a moving so, goal this year. Yeah. Mitch, so you Mitch, better promise to hold our feet to the fire here. Don't let us um, roll you over for the next version, but okay. insist that we do it correctly. 
the benefit of having an existing API is that you can compare. And having a single API, only one choice, doesn't give you the option to compare. So I think it's always good to have A, B, and you know have clear improvements, not just theoretical. Okay, thank you. Yep, bye everyone. Yep.